Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Feet to the Fire. I'd like to present candidate coordinator Roger Bloom for the Pledge of Allegiance. If everyone could please stand. Okay, ready? Begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome to the city, Feet to the Fire Forum. Let's welcome co-founder of the forum and Orange County Register Love and Daily Pilot columnist, Barbara Venezia. And it makes a fiery ring. And thank you for that kind of cool music. Um, welcome to Feet to the Fire. I am Barbara Venezia. I am the co-founder of this forum, along with my partner, John Canales, editor of the Daily Pilot. Let's hear it for John. Feet to the Fire is brought to you by media partners from the Orange County Register, the Daily Pilot, and the Voice of OC. So we appreciate all of the partners coming together, and tonight we want to welcome a new partner, the Orange County Public Affairs Association, and they've underwritten parts of the technical part of the program tonight. So let's hear it for them. You've met my candidate coordinator, Roger Bloom. He's the one who gathers everybody for the forum, and this is our seventh forum, as I've said. And this one, we're going to be talking about the second district supervisor race. So this is exciting. And if you're not familiar with what cities that covers, this covers the cities of Costa Mesa, Cypress, Huntington Beach, La Palma, Los Alamitos, Newport Beach, Seal Beach, Stanton, and portions of Buena Park and Fountain Valley. Now, um, Feet to the Fire started in 2010. And we started right here at the Costa Mesa Community Center, and this has been our home since day one. So we want to thank the folks at the Costa Mesa Community Center and the city of Costa Mesa for allowing us to continue to have our forums here. The next forum will be in September, and that will be on the 18th. We move for the first time to Orange Coast College, and we'll be talking with candidates running for Costa Mesa City Council. Then in September, no, that's in October, we moved to the Oasis Senior Center, and there we'll look at Newport Beach City Council candidates. Uh, Feet to the Fire is unlike any other forum because ours is a political talk show format, which gives you an insight into not only where the candidates stand on issues, but an insight into their personalities. Who they are are just as important as what they stand for. So the candidates have no idea what we're going to talk about tonight. They'll have to think on their feet. So why don't we start by meeting the folks on stage? In the first seat, we have Republican candidate Joe Carcio. He is a Huntington Beach councilman, retired business owner, and he does not have a website, but he does have a Facebook page. Next to him is Republican Alan Mansour, California Assemblyman for the 74th District, and Alan's website is alanmansour.com. And sitting next to Alan is Jim Moreno. And Jim is a Democrat. He's the governing, governing board member of Coast Community College District. And Jim's website is jim4supervisor.com. And last but not least, we have Michelle Steele. From the <laughs> Michelle is a Board of Equalization member, and her website is steelforsupervisor.com. And of course, asking the tough questions is our journalist section. Here we have Jack Wu. He's a columnist with The Current for the Orange County Register. Sitting next to Jack, thank you. <laughs> Alicia Lopez is a city editor with the Daily Pilot. And of course, Norberto Santana Jr., editor in chief of the Voice of OC.org. That's our panel for tonight. So, John, why don't you start off by asking the first question? Thank you for uh, coming out. I wanted to uh, start with, I think, an easy subject pensions. 
And um, as, if you are elected to the Board of Supervisors, and I'm going to ask each one of you, would you be willing to forego your pension? Because you have that option as a supervisor. Michelle, do you want to start? Yes, I will. So you, you pledge to forego your pension mm -hmm. if you're elected. Mm -hmm. Okay. Jim? Well, what I would do with my pension, and I would accept it, but I would put it into an account and it would be used to provide grants for nonprofits. We have such a problem with uh, nonprofits, uh, ch children-based, after-school programs. I'm always asked by folks to uh, give a donation to this and that and the other. I would take that pension money and I would put that in an account that would be used uh, for funding nonprofit organizations, as well as the, uh, the monies that come to a supervisor for sitting on different commissions. I would accumulate that and put it back into the community for specific nonprofit organizations that would uh, uh, send in proposals for grants. We have Child Space, we have Oakview uh, Library in Huntington Beach. These, these are the kinds of programs I think supervisors should, should really make an effort to fund, and not to mention homeless programs also. Okay. Alan, what about you? Uh, I probably would. Um, I, I'm not independently wealthy. I don't have a home in Rancho Palos Verdes in Orange County. I don't have that kind of money, so I probably would. You would probably accept the pension? Yeah, I think there's a couple different ones. I'd probably take the lesser one. Okay. All right. How about you, Joe? You know, I've never taken a pension in Huntington Beach, so there's no need to start now. I'd, I, I wouldn't take the pension. Okay. I'm wondering if we just take it a step further, and would any of you vote to um, stop the, super, the Board of Supervisors from receiving a pension? Would anyone go that far to support it? Uh, you know, I would, I, would, uh, I would not vote on that. I think uh, uh, individuals in their uh, various situations uh, would have to make that choice for themselves. So you like I, the current system? I wouldn't, you, I wouldn't yeah. come out and just uh, forbid people from taking a pension. It just depends on their specific situation. Do you okay. believe in pension yeah. reform? Do I? Sure, yeah, let's ask you then. Uh, yeah, you know, I think it needs to be looked at. Everybody's complaining about public uh, employees getting these horrendous pensions. You have to look at the boards that have approved these pensions. These, these numbers that we're looking at now started about 25 years ago when organizations didn't have the cash to pay their employees, so they promised into the future. And the boards that are talking about doing all these reforms are basically the, bo the boards that cause this problem by providing uh, their employees uh, uh, a couple of pennies and wait because you'll, you'll get it at the end. It kicked the can and it's come home to roost. It has to be looked at. There has to be, I wouldn't call it reform, but I would call it better management of these, uh, of these pension funds. But looking at, you know, I looked at all your websites today, except yours, Joe, you don't have one. Um, and, uh, and on every one of your websites talked about pension reform. But on none of them did it say what exactly you would do to reform them. Alan, I see that you have your hand. Tell me, what would you specifically do to I, reform I would lead them? by example. In, in Sacramento, I refused all pay raises. To me, that's leading by example. We can't ex expect the employees to take a pay cut if we're not willing to take one ourselves. And if we're asking for reform to take place for the employees, we need to do that first. If that means we need to pay more into it or reduce our pension benefits, I am all for that. I will put my money where my mouth is. I have a track record of doing that. So I think that's a great way to lead the county by example, and I will do that before I ask anyone to take a pay Michelle, cut. Michelle, what is your plan? Pension reform is good. Only thing is pension. It's all assumption right now and that unfunded liability. Right now we have $5.7 billion unfunded, but we used to have 100% covered by 2000. It depends on, actually one is rate of return, so when the economy comes back, that number is gonna be covered. And then it depends on that when people's gonna retire and how old they are and they're retiring. And then people actually live much longer years these days. That's why we started having unfunded um, the the pension liability. So that's the reason that board actually took the step, the one step further, so they amortized from 30 years to 20 years, so they tried to pay up within 20 years for that unfunded liability, plus, 
and they actually rate of return, they lowered it from 7.5% to 7.25%. So they actually took very conservative numbers right now. So we are going right direction. That's the way that Orange County actually from double A ratings to double, I mean, A plus ratings. So we are going right direction at this point. Barbara, I'll, I'll also say that right. I, I put my money where my mouth is by leaving the Sheriff's Department going to the assembly where there is zero pensions. I'm not in this for the pensions. Um, I was willing to, to make a no, sacrifice. No, I don't think you're in it for the pensions, yeah. but everybody on their website is saying, oh, I'm going to do pension reform, but nobody on the website said, how are you going to do it? Joe, did you have something yeah, you wanted I, to say? I, yes, I did. Um, right now in Huntington Beach, we're in the midst of uh, contract negotiations. We're in the uh, midst of contract negotiations with the police, the fire, and MEA, our Municipal Employees Association. Um, but all, of the, all of the associations know that they have to make their full contributions. And they have done that. Uh, or we've settled with our fire department, and they're taking on their full pension responsibility. And the police department, we're very close to get me, uh, coming up with a, a contract with, for our police, and they're going to take their full, pay their full share, as well as our municipal employees. So the point that I'm trying to make here is that all of our associations know that the pensions were out of control. And they know that they need to step up, and they are stepping up. So, uh, you, you know, um, I don't know how other cities are doing it, but Huntington Beach, we've, t we've told them that we're not going to accept anything more or anything less than them taking, making their full, sh pay their full share on pensions. Alicia, why don't we throw this to you? Uh, well, well, you kind of, <laughs> you kind of asked one of my questions, but. Uh, you are um, endorsed by Hutchins, and right now they're dealing with the police um, pensions. Um, I mean, it sounds like most of you would support them paying their full 16% share into their compensation, but what about the, giving them a raise um, to compensate at all for it, or you know, how would you deal with the police? Especially since I you think, had the uh, you know, I know it's on the negotiation right now, and they're paying five percent. And at, I think state, uh, the county supervisor is asking to pay up to seventeen percent, so twelve percent increase right now. So they are negotiating. If they don't negotiate right now, because Pepper comes in next year, so what they have to do is they have to settle with those numbers. So they are negotiating right now. But what would so, you support yeah, for, what, uh, yeah, for a pay raise? I mean, I, they're going to make them pay their full bulk. 16%. The question now is the current offer from supervisors is 1.25 and raised. That was what would you guys support? That was what any? that was what employees, uh, you know, Orange County employees did. 1.25% raise plus 1.25% one-time bonus. Right. And you know, uh, Supervisor Morlock said both sides are not happy, so they negotiated good. Something <laughs> has to be done here. So I don't know about the raise at this point, but I'm looking at that. You know, what pension negotiation is going on? So you don't have an answer then in terms of... I don't of have that answer thing. because I'm, I have to really look at the numbers and how economy turns around. Too. Alan, what do you think? I mean, these numbers are not secret. They're pretty well known in terms the, of what the, the county, budget is. The county is in terrible shape right now. I can't support the pay raise. Um, Any at all? Not even the one it's not, it's not sustainable right now. That's going to increase the pension obligation. That increases the amount of the pension. It's not... It's not sustainable. We have about four billion in pension debt right now in Orange County. Now, you what can't, do you say? You can't what do you say to the to others? It. What do you say to the people who will say, if you don't pay those deputies some sort of raise, other jurisdictions like San Diego, Riverside, San Bernardino will pluck your most uh, accomplished deputies, and then you'll have to spend. I think the deputies union pegs it at 180 grand. I think to retain and train someone new, but. Can you chat a little bit about what you balance there? If you say no to raises, are you okay with, in a sense, taking the, the chance that some of these... The same thing I would say to Stockton or San Bernardino or Greece. We don't want to be like we you. We're fiscally responsible here in Orange County. These are difficult times and we have to work through it. So until that, that debt is put under control, we have to, to make some hard well, decisions. And I'm willing Beach, to make those hard decisions. Huntington Beach made their... I mean, their... They kind of worked with the police, and they are they they aren't paying their full. Are they they're paying their full? Yeah, they're paying their full share. Okay. If you get elected, won't you be contributing to the pension debt if you're collecting a pension? 
I'm willing to pay into it, Jack. Like I said, I'll lead by example. I led by example by refusing all pay raises in Sacramento. But if you want to lead I by did example, not... can't you just turn down the pension then? I mean, that's a great example of saying, well, look, pension reform. Um, I mean, that's leading by example, saying how can on one hand you say, I'm going to work on pension reform over here, but on this other hand, I'm going to go ahead and collect my pension just because, to use what Morlock used to say, I'd get paid more in the private sector, so I deserve this pension. No, I, what I'm saying is I support reform, and that means leading by example, reforming mine as well. If it means paying a lot more into it, I'm willing to do that. I don't think the employees are expecting to have their pensions completely removed, and that would be irresponsible. I'm not independently wealthy, Jack. You know, I work for a living. I work hard for what I have. Uh, I try to, you know, provide for myself in other, in other ways. M M but Michelle, I would lead by I example, want, and I think I've answered that. I just want to follow up one quick question with you that you were talking before about having conservative uh, estimates with the pension system that you support, raise, lowering the investment uh, rate of return, mm -hmm. lowering the payoff from mm -hmm. 30 years to 20 years. The tough thing about being a conservative is that you have to be prepared then on the other side to make the cuts. Because if you lower those, the, the thinking goes, if you lower those assumptions, you right. will raise the payment required, but you're not necessarily getting any services. Having looked at the county budget, as I imagine you've done, where would you make the cuts? What do you cut back on? Road maintenance, uh, animal control, jails? I mean, where are the tough choices as a conservative you make? You know, actually, there's a lot of things to cut. Let me start. Um, for example, city of Huntington Beach, they got overpaid utility bills that they got refunded for $200,000. And then another thing is that, you know, those waste and abuse that we are spending $5.4 billion. Actually, this year's budget is very good because they're 4% less than what they were year before. So what we want to do is we really looking at those abuse or you know waste, especially after Have you identified any point, specifically? Yes, $2.2 .2 billion has been spending for community services. A lot of community services means that a lot of welfare recipients are getting it. There is, of course, when people need it, they suppose get it. But when people don't, they should not get it. So what would it. you cut from like, the community uh, services No, budget. no, no. It's not just community services, but let me just tell you exactly what County of San Diego did. In 2005, they called Project 100%. What they did was they sent out the letters to all the welfare recipients, and then they check, they get all the questionnaires coming back. You remember that you read, you know, a lot of welfare recipients said, you know, they put like, you have 10 kids. Suddenly people show up, not like a two yeah, kids. But you're not going you into very specific so those, about what you cut out of the Orange County budget. In that, <coughs> that, 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 the that's County what budget. I'm saying right what? now, that when you go, those welfare abuse and waste you going in, San Diego itself in 2005, the first month they saved half a million dollars. So there's yeah, a lot of I'm not asking you about San Diego. I'm asking about Orange County's budget. That's what, what I want to look at. They so wanna, you want to I, I wanna go potential cuts going in. Yes, I want to go in there. But let me tell you, 1997, actually, our rate of return for pension fund was over 20%. It depends on the economy that it comes. This is all assumption based on the history. So this number, 5.7 billion, it's not $4 billion. It's $5.7 billion on funded pension fund, on, on funded pension fund. That's all yeah, but assumption you still have not offered. You've not offered one specific of one thing you'd cut. Jim, do you want to jump in? Yeah, thank you. I've got, a, I've got a very practical example that we use at, at the Coast Colleges that, that uh, we talk about. We have some people that work there. Uh, and what we did was face uh, 150 layoffs. And what did we want to do? We looked, and I put together this uh, budget advisory task force that employees had a chance to come in and tell us where the waste was. And we found that in six months, we could save $10 million. And that was used while the state was taking money from us. In our region, a total uh, from all the different school districts, $220 million was being taken by the state. We were looking at a hit to us for $10 million bucks which is 150 people. And so we asked the employees, where is this waste going on? You'd be surprised. We found $10 million. We were able to do it. We didn't have layoffs. And at that time, kids were coming to us from Irvine to get their undergraduate courses. And we had 50 kids wanting a classroom. I talked to the professors, what can you do? We're gonna open up, instead of teaching our regular 35, they opened it up to 52 kids. 
and we got these kids through that have a life plan and got them through school. If the county wants to really look at this, they talk to their employees, who know, they know where everything is, they can come up with ideas, it's gonna mean something for the budget, and, and, and cutting human services is not, is not the thing to do. There's waste in a lot of places, and these employees well, speaking with Speaking of right human plan, services and waste, <laughs> um, I, I have a question about CalOptima. Um, with the state and the, and the federal audits that just came out and... I hope I answered your question. Yeah, I hate to interrupt you. I was just, you know, trying to... Thank you. Thanks, <laughs> um, With CalOptima, I mean, looking so bad and, and so many problems that it has, Michelle, what would you do? If you had all the power in the world, what would you do to change CalOptima? And, uh, like Morlock what, what is, you know, thinks that maybe it should go into the state, you know, under state control and then the county wouldn't have to deal with it at all. Um, what would you do to count? You think county uh, state is going to be better than, you know, they can run I better than I, I don't know what I think. I don't think so. <laughs> right now, actually, this morning that, you know, there was an article came out that, you know, uh, actually they were looking at the, um, there's so many problems. Actually, federal government started for investigation now that, you know, half of that half million people uh, our children that they are getting services. What they have to do is they're really going in and looking at and has to be transparent because you know they already had the ad hoc uh, the fraud committee and nothing right. was reported. The people, so nobody really, was watching this and so all this fraud's going on. That's why actually what do you do um, supervisor that, chair that Sean Nelson is appointing another person. We have supervisor uh, Todd Spitzer yeah. sitting here. He's going to get appointed and this Thursday they're going to have first meeting. Do you think more board there. members helps? No, not more board members but it has to be transparent. They have to really show us that what they really studied because they implemented. Well, one of the problems is that the board members actually year. want to be on the the, uh, uh, the board of directors for, for CalOptima, I mean, would any of you actually volunteer to be, be on that? I think, it'd be, uh, I think it'd be inappropriate for a supervisor who has to govern uh, the various departments to do that. And you're pointing out a very good problem. It's the management and what the supervisor expect those management uh, personnel to do. I worked as a deputy supervisor in LA County, and that's exactly what we did. We brought in people that were accountable, it was their job to make sure the services got out within the budget that they were allocated. No questions asked. You did your job or you hit the door. Very simple. In Orange County, there's been so much waste and letters talking about Cal Optima failed 64 times, people getting their bills paid, getting doctor references. I have a personal friend that can't get surgery and being referred to doctors that are on a, on a, on a bad list. It's, yeah, it's the supervisors, but they have to have the people in place that manage and that are accountable. Bottom line, because if they're not, it's your tax money. That's it. Joe, did you want to jump in here for yes. a minute? <laughs> yeah, I did. Um, I just want to go back to uh, what you, t you were talking about before and, and creative ways that we worked in Huntington Beach to bring our, and to balance our budget. What we did is we asked all of our employees who wanted to take early retirement. So we got 103 employees to walk and take early retirement. We also, um, we also uh, uh, had our people go to 410s in our public works department, and we had holiday closures. So there are creative ways that you can use to, to lower down your debt and your deficit. Uh, we had a balanced budget. We've always had a balanced budget in Huntington Beach. We've never not had a balanced budget. And a lot of this is because we lost all the RDA money. And it was, it was really devastating to us. Uh, we stand to lose right now about another $14 million on top of what we did lose. Uh, we may lose the Hyatt and the Hilton, the ground that that's on. So, and I'm on the state oversight board, so I see this on a daily basis. Um, this was really devastating to our city and a lot of other cities, too. Uh, we need to find ways to bring some form of RDA back. And I know that all of, it, 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 you know, it, it, whenever they talked about the RDA, they always talked about the abuses. But what I'm telling you is not the abuses. We have... Do you think the abuses are over-exaggerated? Absolutely. I talked to John Chang about it. He, he cited uh, golf courses and in, in Indian Wells. 
but he didn't say Those anything. Those are rife all over the state, aren't they? Right. All over. But, but he never said anything about the revitalization of downtown Huntington Beach, the Hyatt, the Hilton, uh, Bellaterra, and uh, some of the other great projects we got. You know, we went forward with our Beach and Edinger Quarter, and on that Beach and Edinger Quarter, we've got eight major projects, eight major projects right now. Huntington Beach is revitalized. There's no reason why you can't do that in the county. You just got to be creative in what you do. I think that's consistent with Republican principles to essentially pick no, I'm a Republican. and use public tax dollars to do that? No. Long redevelopment? No. Uh, you know, I mean, they took the, they kind of took the enterprise zones away, too. So, so again, but those are also proven to right. be rife but, with corruption, no? But I mean, it's not, it's not Republican money or it's not Democratic money. It's just green I mean, money. I think that, I think that you, too much, too much emphasis is put on whether you're Republican or whether you're Democrat. As far as I'm concerned, you, you want to look out for what's the best thing to do for your city. Let me jump in here for a minute. Um, I'm going to change course for a minute. The la um, in 2012, Alan, you were on this stage on a feet to the fire when we were doing the uh, 74th Assembly District race. And here we are a couple of years later, and now you're going for um, the supervisor. I know that there has been some criticism that people worked really hard to get you elected to the assembly, and now you're kind of jumping ship and going to supervisor. What do you say to that criticism? Barbara, I, I appreciate that. You know, I was going to run for re-election to assembly, and I appreciate all the support that everyone's given me. I was set to run for assembly. Uh, I had actually endorsed Don Hansen, uh, former mayor of Huntington Beach. He was going to run for supervisor, and uh, he decided not to run. So that only left, you know, basically Michelle was running. And I want someone with strong ties to Orange County, someone who knows the issues and the district. And it's well known that Michelle was planning on running and moving here long before she even bought her house, was planning to move here for supervisor and then potentially run for Congress. I want someone who knows the issues, and going, whether it's Cal Optima, which I didn't get a chance to address, I know Orange County. I grew up here, lived here most of my life. I was on the city council, worked for the sheriff's department for 16 years. My approach, and whether it's Cal Optima or anything else, I've always stayed in touch with people in the community. Usually when something big like Cal Optima happens, or whether it's the lack of oversight at the um, uh, the, the Orange County Fire Authority issuing, you know, uh, collecting fees but not issuing permits. It's because there's a breakdown in communication. I meet with people who use the services. Yeah, but I you're meet not with the telling me the why. You're not telling me why. Because, you, yeah, you are I, jumping I, I, ship. I switched because I switched to, and changed. Did to you run. not like living in Sacramento? No, it has nothing to do with it. I was all set to do that. I was going to do that. I supported Don Hansen. Had he stayed in the race, I wouldn't have done that. But he decided not so to run. So if people run. support you now, how do we know you're going to stay for the whole term as supervisor? I'm finishing my two-year term in the assembly. I'm choosing not to run for re-election. Yeah, but you looked at running for state county supervisor less than four months after winning in November. So it just barely, you're, the Again, ink is barely dry on your thing, and you're already looking to jump ship. Jack, to I want someone from Orange County to represent okay. us. I want How someone long does someone have issues? to live in Orange County when you think it's okay? How long does someone live in I the district? I want someone who knows the issues. How, there are many the issues. How long does someone live in the district before anyone, you should run? Anyone can run, okay. okay? But that doesn't mean they know, okay. you know, so when I want someone who can hit the ground running and doesn't need a learning curve. Okay. So when the four she's or five issues in Orange County for years already. I'm sorry? She's already represented Orange County for eight years. When Jim Barry Brown, he's up in second, Sacramento. He represents Orange County too. Jim Brigheimer lived in how long, in Costa Mesa for how long before you got him onto the planning commission? Before you endorsed him for city council? Hey, at at he, least he's from Orange County. Oh. He could he could he could walk here from Fountain Valley. He doesn't need Did a Jim tank Brigheimer of gas. Represent Costa Mesa he doesn't need a whole tank of gas to drive here commission? from Los Angeles County. You know what? I've been having my <laughs> office in Irvine, and I've been working with Orange County business people for the last seven, this is my eighth year. And actually, I moved, I, I moved down here. 2011, my mom passed away, and I, I've been living in Palos Verdes for, since 1996. And then I said, I'm gonna just move down here. I moved down here, and then I was thinking that I've been helping business people, and I've been helping all the taxpayers, and I thought it's just perfect me to run for a supervisor. I, you know, I just keep attacked, I've been attacked that I just moved in. 
I don't understand that, you know, I moved in 2011. I was born in Korea and I was raised in Japan and I came here to go to college. So how many years do I have to, you know, born in here in Orange County and have to raise in here to do the good job? That's not really true. You have to really, you're looking at my track record that what I've been doing as a board member, I've been doing great job for, as, you know, for the taxpayers. I've got a question here that I'd like to see if, if everybody can answer, if that's okay, can, which can is. Can we just, can wait, let, 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 let Joe answer. I just want to say one thing. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> I've, uh, I've lived in Orange County for 35 years. I've been in Huntington Beach for 35 years. I've been on the city council for eight years. I was mayor in 2010, 2011. I coached baseball and football at Ocean View High School for 18 years. I'm, uh, I'm chairman of LAFCO. I'm the chairman of uh, PCTA. I'm the, on the I'm director on the sanitation district, Orange County Waste Management, vice president of, of Vector Control. I'm on the board of directors of HCCOC. I'm on the board of directors of the California League of Cities. I sit on two policy committees, community services and administrative services. I think I'm really qualified more than anybody else here to hit the ground running. And and you know what? It's really interesting that if you try to make sure that I'm not going to get elected because I don't know anything about Orange County, then you know what? Joe Carchi is running. Then why are you running against him? Yeah. You know, Joe's, Joe's, <laughs> Joe, Joe's a nice guy. I like Joe, but with all due respect, I don't think Joe's going to win. I want someone. <laughs> I want someone who is going to be able to win, and I. And that's going to. And so you want you. I, I supported Don Hansen. I, I supported Don Hansen. All right, but he so, decided so, Alan, to so Alan, when you're up in Sacramento for you know, and you're gonna you want to come here to, to the county, that's great. Um, I want to know what what you did at the state level, what you spearheaded that was successful that you're proud of at the state level. Well, as I mentioned, I'll, and I'll mention it again, I led by example. I refused pay raises. I've put legislation forward that to fix our rehab problem here in Orange County. Oh. I've, put, I've put legislation forward to address a toll okay. tolling issue. I was issue. in the middle of all the rehab I've, issues I've also, in Newport Beach, and, I'm, I'm, and now it's blowing up in Costa Mesa. I've also, how is that being fixed? How, is it, how are you going to fix a federal issue from, state of, from um, Sacramento? Jack, I, my bill passed out a committee. We'll see how far it goes. You asked what I'm doing. I put re, re, all the people I hear from in Orange County are concerned with that issue. It's affecting their quality of life, and people are dying, and they're being mis mismedicated. So like I said, I have legislation dealing with rehab homes, the toll lanes, and um, nu numerous other things that people have come to me to talk to me about that affect Orange County. Do you feel like you've been able to spearhead something success that's already been successful you know, so far? Everybody knows we're in a minority. There's a yeah. super majority that's way out of touch with reality. There's a senator, a Republican senator, that got kicked off of a committee because he dared to speak up and say that a senator who is convicted of a felony should be removed from the Senate. Okay. And so those are the type of things that go up. You're a minority on the State Board of Equalization. Have, what have you got accomplished then? I did. Uh, you know what? I can state all night, but let me just tell you only three things. One, when I got to the Board of Equalization and then you had to make deposits before you, even you pull the seller's permit, $2,000 to $50,000. And that's not really fair for the business the owners that who try to open. So the first quarter of 2007, after I got elected in 2006, I found out that state was holding $42 million. So we returned it within three months period. One of the actually Democrats that, you know, let's analyze it. I said, no, when you owe anything to the taxpayers, just return everything penny to the taxpayers. As of last year of December, we returned more than $200 million. And my project was try to get rid of that program completely. I was talking to Democrats. We are always minority, three Democrats and two Republicans, because there's four board members. And controller John Chung is a Democrat. So I talked to them. Finally, last December, all five agreed to get rid of that seller's permit. So now that security deposits. So now this year that we are returning, 
one half of $267 million going back to the taxpayers. Second thing that what I did, did was that, you know, I have a lot of business people that they actually, they really helped me to find out because I made the advisory board because I don't know and I don't understand everybody's businesses. So we sat down, we talked about it, and when you are late to file your sales tax for one minute late, because three, three o'clock is cut up time, so when people paid and after three, then they used to charge monthly interest. So when you're late for one day, you used to pay monthly interest. I talked to the Democrats and we agreed that we try to make sure that we change it, the computer system, from one, uh, one month to one day figure. So now all the sales taxes that all business people, when they are paying it, when they're late for one day, they pay for one day of interest. When they're late for two days, they pay two days interest. Another thing that for you know, working with Democrats, I'm gonna just tell you only three examples. Another thing is when they didn't have supermajority in legislatures, they want us to interpret the law because Prop 13 is the best thing ever happened in California. So what happened was when you try to create the taxes and you try to raise taxes, you need two thirds of the votes. They couldn't do it. So they asked Board of Equalization to actually interpret the law that download the internet tax is taxable or not. Actually, Orange County Register helped to start it, making a lot of noise. They want to move from another step, you know, another position, their position to another position. So we actually, I talked to them into it. So we stopped $500 million So you've worked with taxes. the Democrats, and what I'm hearing is you've worked with the Democrats to get compromise. So you feel that that is a strong point for you as compromise. I can build the consensus. Building a consensus. Jim, you wanted to say back? something? Uh, yeah, I, I, I think everybody's had a chance to go over their resume, so I'm going to do it in two minutes. Uh, I've lived in Orange County for 42 years. I paid taxes here in Orange County. I worked in Los Angeles County and retired after 35 years. I started out as a probation officer. I went into personnel. I worked as a hospital administrator at two large facilities, one of them being General Hospital. From there, I got a, an opportunity to work for uh, a supervisor. I was a deputy board supervisor for 13 years, and during that time, you asked about successes. We worked with homeless issues, we worked with mental health issues, and we created, the supervisor created with staff work, the Commission on Children's Services, which uh, my colleague here, Michelle Steele, was an appointment on that Commission of Children's Services. So, I've done things like that, but the biggest success, I have to tell you, is I have four daughters that graduated from college, and every year, since I've been on the Board of Trustees for the Coast Community Colleges, for the seven years I've been there, we've graduated over 60,000 students that have gotten their education, they've gotten their transfer to four-year schools, or they've got certification to become tax-paying members of the community. And I think that's my big success. Thank you. All right. Let me, let's change, let's change for a minute. Michelle, at our last Feet to the Fire Forum, somebody walked up to me and gave me um, a piece of paper. Um, and uh, it says, please do not support Diane Harkey. Um, and it, and, and the, the lady who gave me the paper um, was talking to me about how um, she, was in, she was involved in Diane Harkey's husband's uh, business and her, she lost her life savings. And when I look on your website, I see that you are supporting Diane for your position that you're leaving now. I also see that Alan and Joe Carcio are also endorsed by Diane Harkey. Not, not, not on yours, no. You, um, have, she's not, on your I, website. On my website? I think so. I don't think so. Oh, maybe I'm no, wrong on that. She's not, endor but, not endorsed by <laughs> Diane Harkey. But, um, Neither am I. Neither am I. <laughs> but um, uh, what, what do you say to, to, to that lady and to people who have lost their life savings in that scandal um, that, you, that you now support her for your job, which is basically taking care of taxpayer money. You know what, actually by the court ruling that she was not involved with her husband's investment company. And that investment company, there's good days and bad days. And then when you're investing money, you know there's a risk to lose. 
For her, I endorsed her because of her record, a voting record as assembly member. And second, she's been working very hard actually going around and learning how BOE is working. That's why I endorsed her, and I'm proud that I endorsed her, and she's, she so knows So you don't think the there's any blowback on her from her husband's? Why do I have to defend her about the court already said that she was not involved with her husband's company? So why do I have to defend her here that what I looked at was her record, voting record, and what he's, she's been doing, they tried to learn how BOE works with the taxpayers. That's the only reason that I endorsed her. Alan, did you want to say something? Well, I just think that's why it's important to support someone who has a track record in Orange County. I appreciate, you know, Michelle's active on a lot of national issues and statewide issues, um, getting, you know, presidential candidates, raising, raising hundreds of thousands of dollars, but I have a track record in Orange County, and that's what keeps me accountable to the people here in Orange County. I, that's, you asked why I'm running earlier. This race has serious implications. There are many things that happen on the Board of Supervisors. I wasn't afraid to stand up to Mike Corona and his machine. I'm not afraid to stand up to the Mike Corona machine now either. That's, there are serious implications for who's be, going to become our next district attorney. There are serious implications on the 405 toll lanes. Who gets a, you get a vote on the, on the when OCTA. You the, the Mike Corona machine, who are you talking about? Because he's in jail. Yeah, <laughs> yeah the same, a lot, of, lot of the same people who that have supported, about? I'm not going to name names. The same, a lot of the same people. Why would you make an accusation and not A lot of the name. same people that have supported Mike Corona. Like? Are supporting, are supporting Michelle Steele. Like? I mean, Michelle, Michelle supported Corona. I opposed Corona. I stood up in front of the Republican Central Committee. You asked about working with the other side. I wasn't afraid to stand up to Mike Corona when all the Republicans were standing up and, and endorsing him. We knew he was corrupt and using the, the helicopter for personal use. I stood up and endorsed his opponent. I could not support Mike Corona. And I think that's the type of leadership I'm just curious, we need here in Orange County. You, you want to be a county supervisor, so I'm just curious. The machine I'm, that I'm you talking say is about, ominous, who are we talking about? I think it's important that... If you're going my to point is, there's a difference. somebody, say who they are. My point is there's a difference between being involved at the national level and maybe at the state level. And so raising, you're not going to name who you're Raising hundreds about. of thousands of dollars to get people elected uh, for president well, and working well, on local, local issues. You know, I, do have, I do have one quick follow-up question about the job that you are all, all seeking. As a county supervisor, for years this county was dominated by development as it was built out. That's largely over. Now you have a lot of regional uh, uh, roles for the supervisors, whether it's an Orange County Fire Authority that is, may not even be there, I don't know, it seems like it's falling apart. Cal Optima, a billion dollar agency for the poor and elderly that seems completely in, in trouble. What I'm curious is for all of you that are running is, what do you see as the role of a county supervisor, especially for some of you that are conservatives that probably don't even believe in the programs that you're asked to administer. If I could, Norberto. How, how do you uh, jump into that? Feel free to take yeah, that whoever you could. want first. A lot of people don't understand the role of a county supervisor. If you, look at, if you look at the state of California, the county is an arm of the state, and they provide the local overseeing and, and the tax, uh, tax uh, distribution for health, welfare, uh, uh, police, fire, they take care of those kinds of issues. You have the the uh, administrative offices. You've got yeah, the tax How are you going to push that? Because I mean, we don't have time for this. No, no, no. I, I understand that. But there's government. a lot of things. Public health and health is one of the big deals, and a lot of people don't understand that. As a supervisor, you have got to put the experts in place to take care of these various roles. Yeah, but I'd like to hear specifics. If we can stick to specifics, because we're kind of dancing around a little bit. So I mean, when it comes to, for example, two agencies, Cal Optima, Roads. Fire service. Fire service, one of the most, I mean, we're all going to put our loved ones in a paramedic at some point. No, How I, I was that? in a paramedic, and I want, to see, I want to see that the people in charge are accountable, and they can respond to questions. And if a constituent comes to me and say, I'm not getting my Cal Optima uh, plan taken care of, I will take care of that as a supervisor. I've done it before. I know how to do it, and I will do it again. And, Roberto, you mentioned uh, specific agencies. I'll just pick one. OCTA, whoever becomes the next county supervisor, has a seat on the Orange County Transportation Authority. The 405 toll lane has been a huge issue in Orange County. The oh, okay. The I'm on the M2 Oversight, Taxpayer Oversight Committee. I'm sorry? Over I'm on the M2 Taxpayer Oversight Committee for the OCTA. And we looked at all the different options. All we do is look at the money, how the money's spent. And when you, and you keep bringing up toll road, toll road, toll road, 
Well, because Norberto asked, you know, what are, the, what are the jobs? I mean, you have unincorporated areas you need to manage like Rossmore. You have uh, agencies like uh, Fire Authority, uh, Cal Optima, and so again, or, or Norberto asked. You guys have studied these issues for a while, so I'm curious. What, what would you do about OCFA? Well, Should it you, be redone? I, Should it I'm, hap I'm happy to talk about OCFA, but you asked about specific examples, so I chose OCTA and the 405 toll lane because that's an issue that affects Costa Mesa, Huntington Beach, Fountain Valley, Seal Beach, the whole, uh, you know, Rossmore. The voters well, like three the, or four the, times. The, 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 voter, the voters supported Measure M and were told they were going to get a free lane. OCTA bureaucrats and some elected officials were going to use that money and put in toll lanes. We know the history of the issue, twice. man. No, What's different no, about that's what you not how it is. I actually, I've looked at the numbers. I've looked at all the statistics. So I'm on there. They, they are putting in one, one free lane is actually going to go in there. Yeah, they then finally they, voted the right way. Then they looked pressure. at what are the other options. If we give a toll road there, not that I'm in favor of toll road, but if we put if we put a toll road there, people could pay extra to go a little bit faster. The whole idea is to ease congestion on those roads. That 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 isn't being forced. It was just an option here. If you want an extra t extra carpool lane, Norberto asked me a question. I was trying to answer his but question. But you're answering it. I worked. I worked, a while. I worked with the <laughs> corridor cities to support alternative. Can I ask you about three other agencies that you haven't touched? Okay, go Orange back County, Orange yeah. County Fire Authority. Fire Authority is okay. where I'm, you know, let's, let's hear about that one. That's the one that's imploding. So I'm yeah. curious what yeah. you guys would do about that. It's a billion dollars. I would have agency, more direct oversight, hands-on approach, um, mm. to, sp to spend more time. What does that mean? Hands-on approach? <laughs> it means, I mean, do look, they not have a hands-on approach okay, now? Okay, I'll give you an example. I'm not afraid to audit any county agency. I'm on the Joint Legislative Audit Committee in Sacramento. We do audits all the time. If I have to audit every county But or you don't have agency, a vision. I mean, there seems to be a lack of leadership from the supervisors when it comes to OCFA, even on things like an animal shelter. So again, it's those regional services, what would you do to either save them or transform them? Maybe the county doesn't need a, a regional fire do you, authority. Do you like I mean, the way the ambulances are set up right now? Do you right. think that we should have, you know... Should we just get rid of it? I mean, should we just go, should we go back to... Michelle, I mean, do you have a sense of I mean, OCFA? Joe, uh, Joe had his hand. He, he wanted to... Do you have Anybody? an idea for this, Joe? Some specifics? Yes, I do. Um, first of all, I think the OC, uh, uh, Orange County Fire Authority is a little bit too large. Too large. It needs to be reduced a little bit. From what? Um, From 24 down to what? From board members is what you're yeah, talking Yeah, board about. members, yes. So it's an unwieldy board governance structure. Right. Uh, I, I'm on a board like that. I'm on vector control. 35 people on vector control. We, it's, it's, it's horrible to try to get anything done. So you, you, need, to, you need to make some adjustments there. What would you go down to? Uh, I'm not sure. I'd have to think about it and, and, look, and look at the, the, what it should be. You know. How do you know for sure I don't, lowering it would be better? Uh, well, I don't know. I'd have, to, you know, I'd have to think about that, too. But I'm saying that right now it's not working the way it should, so maybe this is an option that we could use. And just to go back to what uh, uh, Alan had said uh, about that uh, he didn't think I could win, well, and he, he, and he, uh, um, he endorsed Don, um, Don Hansen, and he was a big Don Hansen supporter. Don's my friend. I like Don, but I got more votes than Don Hansen. <laughs> and... Uh, in Huntington Beach. In Huntington Beach, right. But that's the largest city in the yes, district. So, and um, so, and I, I, I just don't understand why Alan thinks that he's more qualified than me or even Michelle to, or Jim to uh, be. <laughs> don't forget Jim. And Jim's my buddy. Uh, you know, I, you know it's, it's difficult for me to comprehend why Alan thinks that he's more qualified when I sit on more boards that supervisors sit on one of the most difficult things that, that the supervisors have to, uh, have to address are uh, unincorporated areas. And uh, we're doing it as a chairman of, of LAFCO. This is one of the things that we're doing right now. This is important. We well, you know, Feet to the Fire is a way for people to get to know candidates mm -hmm. and, and get to know you and your issues. But the, the other thing is you've, you've got to all run campaigns. Right. And so um, there's no way that you can literally walk around and meet every constituent. So um, how much, if I may ask, how much have each of you raised in your campaigns? Because mailers are important, and I've gotten three from Michelle already. Um, and. <laughs> <laughs> so I think I'll probably be getting a lot more. Um, and and so so let's start with you, Joe. How how much have you raised, and how are you going to get your name out there to to beat Alan or any of the well, other people on the panel? Well, 
without the loans, without any personal loans. Without any personal loans? Yeah. How much have you raised? Okay, 75000 75000 Yes. Alan? Uh, a little closer to $100,000. Uh, about forty. About forty. About 40. And Michelle? Over 550000 Yeah, yeah. Okay. But let, me, you know what, let me tell you one thing, because I've been accused that I raised way too much money. Only thing is, as a candidate, that you know, when you get good candidate, doesn't mean they're going to bring you a check. You have to really work diligently. That's what I am, and I'm working very hard to raise this money. And Barbara, <laughs> it's, it's not about. It's not always about how much you raise. I've been outspent in every race I've ever run, and I've always prevailed. I've worked hard reaching out to people in the community. I grew up here, and all, and you know, as I've said. So it's it's more about the issues. It's more about getting out to the Well, community. but Alan, I mean, honestly, you you that may be true, but when you're doing a city council race, it's easy to get out and walk precincts. I mean, you're talking about a supervisor race. Look how many cities. I mean, you can't possibly walk all these cities. So you do, I mean, part of fundraising is showing that the community is supporting you. And that you're, I mean, it's part of the business of running for office. Not necessarily that the person who raises the most will win, granted, but you have to have a plan to reach people. Yeah, but, and, I, and I do. Um, we're going to be doing mail. I have good endorsements. John Morlock has endorsed me. It's very, uh, um, I think that's a huge endorsement to have the outgoing supervisor, especially someone that's uh, as respected as John Morlock. So I do have good support. I have endorsements in Costa Mesa, Costa Mesa Mayor, uh, Huntington Beach uh, Mayor. I have endorsements in uh, Seal Beach, Fountain Valley. I have good support. I do walk precincts. I get out in the community. I have a lot of community uh, coffees. Alan, you know, I actually, I, I am one of those believers that if you walk in, knock on enough doors, you can do it. Um, <laughs> I, I believe it. But, uh, but I am curious because I know you've been to assembly, I know you did that, but you still have a pretty, you know, hardcore reputation for the anti-immigration stuff, for the, you know, you have the reputation, even if it's not true. So, and even if you're not necessarily worried about the Latino vote, um, I would assume that most of you are worried about looking good and looking like you're not anti-Latino and anti-immigration at this point. Uh, so what do you do? What do you do? I'm well, bo both. I'm not anti. To be anti-immigrant, I'd be against my parents. I they both immigrated here. I support legal immigration. My my dad came from Egypt. My mother came from. You Sweden. have to understand people's point of view. My mother, my mother, from my mother-in-law came here from Vietnam. I understand. Okay. okay. Do you support I, 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 then? No, I do not. And you know. So what do you think I, should be done with 12 million? First of all, my my position on that you're talking about what I did in Costa Mesa. I support. I I I. I I'm not going to back down from what I did in Costa Mesa. Those are people that were committing crimes in addition to coming here illegally. Burglars, robbers. Uh, I have a track record of upholding our laws, and I'm going to continue to do that. Do you think that 12 million people should be deported and then they fill out for this? I mean, I'm curious. When you say yeah, you're not for amnesty, what should be done I, then? I don't think you can just round up everyone. And some people, I know Dana Rohrbach or maybe Michelle, because Dana's, you know, kind of supporting her. Dana but, supported you two years ago. Yeah. But either way, my point, my point is, well, they're best friends, so he's, he's supporting her. Okay. But you can't just up and round, you know, round up everyone. Some people think that anything short of that is amnesty. But when Michelle spoke at the Tea Party, she said she opposed even the Lincoln Club proposal. Then when she went to go speak to the Lincoln Club, she told them she supported parts of it, but she had not read it, and that she does not support E-Verify. I support E-Verify. Michelle, it's, what do you think should be done? Should 12 million people be deported? How did we okay. figure that out? I, you know what, you were a little overboard. I am not against Lincoln Club's uh, amnesty, I, 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 Lincoln Club's policy. I am against amnesty. I am a first generation immigrant. Mm -hmm. There's 4.4 million people outside try to come here legally. Mm -hmm. We have to take care of them first, and then you talk about but illegal immigration. What do you do about the people illegal that are here immigration. legally? Illegal immigration. We illegal. have, actually since 19, 1940s, we had a guest worker program. So give them to work and pay taxes. That's the good things to do. So we really have to, the first, we should not give this illegal aliens that somebody broke the law already, give them citizenship or what are we doing? immigrant. I just told you, what? guest worker program. Just try them in a guest them, worker? Yes. Yeah. I and that's you what I'm Do you support uh, E-Verify? Do you support E-Verify? E-Verify, actually, <laughs> sorry, Jen. <laughs> E-Verification is actually hurting federal so government's job. So you don't support job. it? So no, I don't, because okay. 
that hurts the businesses. Why business has to have another step to do their job? Have you ever done that before? It's very, very tough to do because it's hard to find out that they're really legally here or not. That's federal government job. You don't give another burden to the businesses. So I don't support EBRT. Alan, one, one, one of your big supporters. Could I please? Uh, one, one, one quick question, please, for Alan. Um, there's this letter that went around that you had signed that um, it's about passing comprehensive immigration reform and you asking the, con um, the congressional delegation from California, the Republicans, to support uh, John Boehner's vote for immigration reform. If yeah. that is an amnesty... First of all, they, they took the date off, they used it out of context. I do not support amnesty. You didn't sign this? They took, I, said I was they curious took, about what date this was. Jack, they, they... It doesn't matter what date it is if you signed know, it. When they used it, when, <laughs> Jack, when they used it, they took the date off and they used it for a purpose later, much after the fact. But either way, all I'm saying is my intent with that letter is to say that I support reform. The system is broken. I do support strong borders. I support E-Verify. I support, um, uh, you know, reasonable measures like a, a guest worker program like the Lincoln Club proposal but only with strong measures in place but see, to this make is sure all about immigration and for me I'm really interested in making sure that you know my representatives think of even immigrants as humans and I and I have a hard time sometimes they are human. You, I agree. Right, I'd like to say something <laughs> yes Jim H having come <laughs> thank you <laughs> having come from education and seeing the 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 kids that I have to deal with that come forth and that finally graduate. You know, these dreamers are here because they were brought here when they were young. And they have the stigma of being undocumented, but these kids speak, they write, they are great citizens. I've been escorted around campuses by these kids, and you would never know the difference. These kids need to have a way to get a legalization taken care of. They are going to be the prime folks. And if anybody's talking about a guest worker program, then I would want to make sure that those people get the prevailing wage, that they get the a right amount of benefit, and that they get the fees and, and, and the pay that everyone else gets. I don't expect a whole Bracero program to develop because of some ideology that is not going to help people that are here running for their lives that come here because it's safer. And I'm exactly all American about that. They want to live here, let's help. Uh, the biggest, the, you, you talk about borders, the biggest entry point for undocumented is the LAX international airports. These folks come in with visas, they never go home. And it's not just Hispanic, Central America, Latinos. We've got folks from all over the world. You know, I've seen Australians <laughs> deported. I've seen Australians deported. So if we're going to talk about this issue, and we're talking about guest workers, then we need to talk about prevailing wage. Uh, they, they get the benefits, and they're here to work to help their families. And we'll see a real increase in pride of citizenship. Thank you. But, Joe? But those, those are the yes. types of things you have to have in place. Joe, Joe, you want to weigh in on this? Uh, yeah, I did. Um, last, uh, last week, I was in Sacramento, and uh, I was at a press conference with uh, Jimmy Gomez. Jimmy Gomez uh, came, has a bill to address human trafficking and massage parlors. And this goes back to illegal immigration. It's very prevalent in the Chinese uh, community as well as the Vietnamese community. In Huntington Beach, we went from five massage parlors to 72 massage parlors. So the idea, we ha you have to want, it's the, the human trafficking is, is a problem. It's a problem because you have the illegal immigration. You have to address, we created this monster. We have to find a way to cure it. And putting them on a bus and taking them back to where they came from is not the cure. The cure is to find an, an equitable settlement between everybody so that everybody is treated like a human being. And um, um, we're, we're putting, pushing really hard and heavy with this human trafficking and to get this bill passed and we're going to have press conferences throughout Southern California to hopefully uh, put an end to this because it's really uh, becoming a very serious problem. Well, we're almost at the 8 o'clock hour, so I want to wrap up. Michelle, why should I vote for you as my supervisor? <clears throat> because I have a track record that what I've been done at BOE, and I, I'm a hard worker, and actually 
out of all four, I think I have the best track record to help taxpayers. Jim, why should I, Jim, why should I vote for you? Why should you, why should you vote for me? I'm glad you asked the question, because I have the experience of being a deputy supervisor, of working with a $16 billion budget in a, an organization with 100,000 employees, and finding problems, solving problems, and cutting waste. I have also been able to bring those skills to the Coast Community College District, where we've kept the doors open and the lights on, and we've made sure that these students with their life plan would not get interrupted and have to spend four years to get a two-year degree. These are the kinds of things I do. These are the kinds of things that I will continue to do. Alan, That's why should I vote for you? Because I have, a tra I have a track record here in Orange County. I'm not afraid to stand up against special interests. I'm not afraid to stand up against any political machine. I work for you. I've always had an open door policy, and my door is always open to each and every one of you. I'd be uh, honored to be able to earn your support. Thank you very much. And Joe, last but not least, why should I vote for you for supervisor? Well, I'm a 35-year resident of Huntington Beach, Orange County. I'm a local businessman. I had several businesses, including two restaurants. I've been on the city council for, uh, for eight years. I was the mayor. We've had balanced budgets. I'm on every major board and commission, in both state and county and locally, and I'm the most qualified candidate to run and be the supervisor and you can count on me because you'll know that I'll be very competent. Thank you. Well, thank you. And that about wraps it up for tonight. I want to thank you all for coming to the seventh Feet to the Fire Forum. Give yourselves a nice round of applause. I want to thank everybody on the stage and my fellow journalists and my partner, John Canales. We'll see you again next time.